States around the country are all scrambling to audit their random breath testing systems after revelations in Victoria that officers faked more than 250,000 of them. The phony tests weren't setting anybody up or letting anyone off. They were an apparent attempt by officers to meet quotas. Ashlyn McGee looks at the fallout. This is Lucky Phil. Victoria's been busting drink drivers since the early 60s. Excuse me, driver. Good evening, sir. Chief Inspector McMenamy is my name. It was the first state in Australia to introduce random breath tests in 1976. See your licence, please. A cultural crackdown that led the way for the rest of the country. So what went wrong? And I'm incredibly disappointed that I had to, um, you know, be a senior officer of Victoria Police or a person within Victoria that is, um, is um, you know, on a day like today having to explain to the community that we have, um, we have breached their trust. Late last year, Victoria's Transport Accident Commission raised the alarm with police. They noticed some anomalies in the breath test data. Victoria Police launched a massive audit, combing five and a half years worth of breath tests, which confirmed the suspicions were correct. I was incredibly disappointed, amazed. Nearly 260,000 tests had been falsified and it's a statewide problem. Nowhere is immune from the fraud. Right now, I'll do one test. I'll then press next. I can just keep going on if you really wanted to. This is how police are suspected of duping the system. That's the next one. That's four tests, probably in the span of about 40 seconds, I would say. That's the fifth test. T Siver works for Andertech, a Melbourne company that sells breathalysers like those used by Victoria Police. Any of these machines, if anyone's looking at the data, these machines are very accurate with the time and date and the test results. I could do probably five tests in a span of a minute, which will t show you that on the 31st of the 5th at 11.51 a.m. Um, and 10 seconds, a test was taken, and then again at 11.51 and 20 seconds, another result was taken. That will already tell you evidentially that a test has been taken too quickly. Whether they be law enforcement. Assistant Commissioner Russell Barrett headed the audit that uncovered the scam. Well, I suppose it was one of, of, of doubting what I was actually um, being told. You know, um, like, you know, so in, in, in my role over 30 years, I investigate a lot of different things, and you obviously then have to go back and test the evidence and work your way through it. He was sent out today to issue the mere culpa and a warning. Today is a day where we've drawn the line in the sand, in, in my mind. We've gone out and told our members last night and again today that this behaviour will not be tolerated. How did people not understand that yesterday, though? That I'm not sure. But he's still struggling to explain what went wrong. I, I don't know why this happened. Um, that's part of what I need to understand moving forward and where our investigation moves to next. The police union's certain pressure is to blame. If it's not criminal, it's not misconduct. What it is, it's, it's statistical fudging at best. And that's not right. We would much prefer our members were honest and truthful because then the truth would come out. And the truth is that at the moment our members have unrealistic targets in an under-resourced environment. We don't expect them to falsify um, their outcomes or their, or their particularly PBTs whilst they're trying to achieve the, the, you know, the measures we set for them. So this is the car after our collision. As you can see, there's not much of it left. Nicole Smith was 18 when she survived the alcohol-fueled car crash that killed her friend Vicky Stein. I mean, I think